Yes, Paul Knox, I am going live today. Here we are, again. I thought I was going to be late because um, the blacksmith just turned up. I, I discovered he was going to be delivering next door. Hello, Mary Ann Ray, you'll be interested in this. Yeah, it turned out that he was going next door, so I quickly sent him a message and said, if you're in the area, please, can you take the back shoes off my mare? Because she's just managed to kick the other horse and make, uh, I don't think it's a life-threatening injury, but um, on its back leg. So the blacksmith's just been, and I said, I have to go. I have to be back in for 12 for my fans. Uh, hello, Heather. Hello, Susan. Hello, Mary Ann Ray. Hello, Gail, Annalene. <laughs> hello, Louise. Your paintings are lovely, really liking them. Um, hello, Christine and Sarah Renton. I uh, look forward to seeing how you progress. Uh, hello, Judith. In the office, eating my bait and watching you. Hello, Neil. How are you? Hello, Rose. Um, and I'm really engrossed in uh, a big painting I'm doing. I'm going to tilt. You see that one over there? Can you see it? Just a simple yes. Uh, so that's a big poultry painting. And um, it'd be too boring to do in front of you because it's just quite laborious. Anyway, uh, and fun. I mean, it's like now actually looking at it in reverse there, it's quite interesting. I quite like, um, yeah. Hello, Ruth Brown, daughter of mine. Hello, Annaline. Hello, Melanie. How are you? Paul, you're watching, great. Um, Heather, yes, it, oh good, thank you. Marjorie, hello, I love turkeys. Paul, I'm not gonna warn you again. Hello, Guy, hello, Gail. Hi, Marianne, do you still have that lovely big dark bay that I do? She's, she's, she's the one I've just had the back shoes taken off. I think she's coming into season and she's been a bit <clears throat> with the other one. And uh, today I had to put the purple spray on a wound of the other one. Yeah, she's great. She's a lovely horse. Karen, hi. Ruth Brown, I'm supposed to be doing first aid. Why? Who's injured themselves? Hello, Kirsty Donaldson. How lovely to see you. And I hope you're getting along okay. I think about you quite a lot, actually, Kirsty. Right. Do you remember yesterday we began a black parrot tulip painting using this lovely bulb that's opened up a bit? But what's really lovely about them is they've got um, the green and purple together, which is magic. Yeah, nature is just so... Oh, the sun's gone in, that's good. Oops. So I did two more. I started two more um, opening blooms, which we can carry on with, although I think they're still a bit wet. Hello, Sarah. Quite the vlog. Three cockerels, I think. One, yeah, one, two, three. The rest of them are hens, leghorns. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Irene. Hello, Claire North Lewis. Oh, boy had an idea for today and I've forgotten it. Paul told me. Oh, thank you, Melanie. Hello, William Pippendrick. That was a very funny Instagram thing you did yesterday, the Agadu one. Very funny, I see you like that. Um, I think I'll just, as I say, I've just done these two here. Um, I'll put, I'll paint on the, tip you over, hang on to your hats, folks. And I'll just paint the, um, the stalks. Because they do go, on the black parrot tulips, they go quite sort of bendy and curly-whirly. And I quite like to include that in the painting. So Rococo tulip we did the other day. That's a little bit too dark. Mm, and that's a little bit there. That's probably okay.
So I think we'll just sort of let that dry for a bit and then return to it and put the sort of the purple bits on the flowers so that can go to one side. You remember yesterday when we started the Pouncing Fox? I can't remember, this was done because one or two people said, please paint a fox, please paint a fox. So I did. Hello Linda, hello Abdul Nassar. Nassar, should you not be doing some cooking for lunch by now? Gemma, you and Mari would love watching this, I'm sure. Hello Fiona again. All right, so we move on to the next bit of this, which is, um, I am going to put some more depth onto it. Uh, and that's going to be a broad brush type of thing. So I'm going to mix up. I'll try and mix up uh, a, a sort of stronger ginger colour. Again, always testing. Um, I think that might be a bit too dark actually. That's probably about okay. Went for to the river again yesterday for a swim and it was just lovely again. You see, I tip my brush on the side to um, just sort of hint at the, the fluffiness of the, the coat. Oh, wait till you hear. I got the funniest photograph yesterday from Fife's niece. She's pregnant and so she's self-isolating in London. They live in, um, oh, quite a smart bit of London. Anyway, so I've got this photograph and it is a fox lying, sunning himself on the rabbit hutch above the rabbits, one of which was pulled from the mouth of the fox that was trying to eat it last week and is still recovering, having had a, an injured paw. So that's quite a good story. Can you believe it? I mean, what a nerve. And, and, and I, maybe I'll put the photograph on my Facebook page and then you can see it. I think it's on my Laura's Insta page, I'm not sure. <laughs> I would just, uh, I love seeing foxes. When I go to London, um, I, I, I look out because you get them on the railway sidings. If, as you sort of enter London on the train, it's very rare that you wouldn't see a fox just sort of trotting, al trotting along on the, on the side of the track as you get towards King's Cross. You see it's beginning to sort of look a bit more, a bit more foxy. Don't be afraid of using a massive brush. Uh, you just need to get used to it, really. We've got some chickens that have just hatched. Very exciting. I think we put eight eggs underneath the clocker. A clocker is a hen that is um, uh, that sits. You know, she's she's sitting on eggs. Anyway, so. Yesterday, eight of them had hatched, which is quite good going, really. But we don't know what they are because we just got the eggs from a neighbour. So we've got absolutely no idea. I think that uh, there might be like a buff Orpington among the eggs. Some of them are grey and some of them are, some of them are sort of yellow chicky type. I think that's, that's coming together quite nicely. Mary Ann Ray, Henry fed a fox by hand. <laughs> Ate at night in central London at Shelley's Burger. It's amazing, isn't it? 
Melanie, could you perhaps say what colours you are mixing in to change the colours? Um, I've only got a few colours, Melanie. I mentioned this before. I've, I use alizarin crimson, Windsor red, yellow, sap green, Payne's grey and French ultramarine. So that, that is my palette. And the type of paints I use, oh, this is interesting. Right, I got a message from Andrew. Andrew makes these lovely, lovely paints, A.J. Ludlow. And because he has been having more traffic to his website as a result, me mentioning them, uh, and they truly are the best paints. They're just utterly beautiful, nearly all pigment. He has, um, he's putting something on his website, like smaller amounts, because they, these are in here is 15 mil which quite frankly, you'd be going some to use all of that because it's nearly all pigment. He's going to do some, um, I think, s smaller quantities in um, like packs of, oh, I can't remember, four or six or eight. Anyway, basically, he's going to do a deal for people who would like to try them. And I do recommend that. So that's AJ Ludlow Paints. So I've just got a mixture of yellow, red, and maybe a little bit of green to make this stronger colour. But if you look here, you'll see that I'm using previously mixed stuff. I don't like to waste. And I very rarely will wash out all of my palettes. See, there's another one. So I can just dip in. You've just got to experiment, really. I'm sorry, Melanie. I can't be, I can't be more uh, specific than that. Now I'm going to do the black bits. I'll just be fairly careful about where's my black paint's grey. Get a bit of that, a bit of that. Just so I'm just sort of think where the. Sorry, you can't see. So that's, that's like the eye. Can you see it? And then, Lovely black nose. And the other thing that Fox has is, um, black tips to its ear. So you can see, okay. Oh, I'll get some really strong black and those Sort of looking a bit more foxy there. Um, I quite like to put a bit of sort of darker areas. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll give him a mouth. So this is really just quite a pale bluish. Do you know what looks lovely together? Blue and ginger. 
there they just look amazing together now then if you ever went out to art college for any length of time i think you would have learned about like the color wheel and what colors work well together and where they are on the wheel um i'm not ashamed but um I did not learn that but I think I probably worked it out because things like the purple and green I think that they are opposite each other on the color wheel a friend of mine David Taylor who's an amazing photographer and graphic designer he does most of my most of my designing I say oh, I'd quite like to do such and such on my catalog this year and he sort of and he takes my ideas and then works with them. He told me this because I said, why do, why do those colours just work together? And he said, well, and he's a very, very nice chap and he wasn't patronising at all. And he didn't say, how come you don't know that? He said, well, if you look at the colour wheel, I said, I don't even know what that is. And he explained it to me. That's quite nice. Um, like I say, I'm going to just show you. I'm going to show you how amazing blue would look against that by imagining that we have a blue sky. So I'm literally just going straight into my French ultramarine here. Um, I say I'm going straight into it. What I'm going to do is just. I think I'll put it into that little dish. Can you see okay? Could you perhaps love your Peter Rabbit pin? <laughs> Good morning Mary Anne. Hello Lucy, hello Anne, hello. Good to see you've got your vital tulip petal. Emma Scott is watching, hello Emma. Blacksmith Kate. Irvin, what have you done with the blacksmith? What do you mean what have I done with him? I've locked him in a stable. <laughs> hello Victoria Older. Hello Annie Ball, daughter of mine. Hello Chris Armstrong. Annie, you should get all her, like with her brushes and stuff. Some people have got their children. Hello Evan. How's the tar world going? The world of tar. Are you using a, I'm using a card, Beth. I've got a card in front of me. A greetings card I did a while ago. Hello, Hil oh, hello, Hilda. Hello, Alexander Miller. How are you? I hope you're managing all right. Jean, will you message me your address, please? I've got those licorice all sorts that are disgusting and I promise I haven't spat on them, um, but I'll send them to you. Hello, Rachel. Right, so yeah, I'm going to show you how blue just looks amazing against ginger. Ginger. <laughs> It was a programme about people with Tourette's, I always remember. Ginger pubes. <clears throat> anyway. Something quite... Oh, look there, you can see the watermark on the paper, I hope. Do you see that? Saunders Waterford. I love, I love it when it does that. So I guess we could, like, in this imaginary world, we could have this fox, like, pouncing up from the green ground and being silhouetted against the sky. And as I said yesterday, this is uh, this is just a thing that I have watched and just loved in the field down below here. I did my stint in the lambing shed this morning, folks, and it's getting shorter because I think things are starting to calm down at last. So it was really just... Um, 
putting some cake and water buckets. Oops, forgot about that. And shoving a couple of sheep in what they call the head pieces. Do you remember I, I mentioned about setting on lambs the other day? Well, sometimes, sometimes you use, they don't even, they don't like lambs much and they don't even like their own lambs. Um, and there is a device, it's like a door with a hole in, you stick the sheep's head through the door and the lambs are in the pen behind and uh, I'm afraid that is sometimes the only solution in these situations. I'm doing this, I'm doing a sort of self-indulgent thing where I'm just adding more and more of that amazing blue pigment just so that I can enjoy the two colours together. It's pretty nice. Do you think that works? Some stage I'd probably put some whiskers on the fox and I'd probably darken up those those paws in the front in the foreground. Um this might be a bit of shadow underneath as well. I love just moving paint around, that is the beauty of watercolour. So we'll leave that to dry and maybe come back to it. Let's come back to the gorgeous black parrot tulips. I've got an open one here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I think possibly my very favourite flower. And then I've got these are grown by Northumbrian Flowers and that she is a local flower grower and she supplies flowers and that she's grown herself but she's also selling um, perennials and they'll be like particularly good ones because they're grown in the North Tyne so that's like probably the coldest frostiest place in the world so they'll be tough so they're really lovely and that's where you get the like the green and the purple together. So I'm back there where I can see them. And then I've got this other lovely one here, which I am referring to. So I'm going to tip you down. Hello, Sarah Holberg. Oh, Kathy. Hello. How are you? I hope you're feeling better. Poor Kathy has been ill. Hello, Darren. I hope you're enjoying the fox. Amanda, our oh, lovely Amanda. That naughty Katie kicked Harry. He's all right. So the back shoes have come off. Just to let you know, Helen Henderson, gorgeous tulips. Thank you, Helen. Did you get the individual ceramic tiles you're using? Are they ones on different paints? Uh, yes, all the information about my paint and my paper um, are on my website. If you go to shop and then you go to lockdown gang, there will be nothing to buy there, but it tells you my paper, my paint, the colors I use and some suppliers. And as I mentioned earlier on, I think you must've been a little bit late, Julie Griffiths. Um, I use Windsor & Newton whole pans, but these are the Windsor & Newton like porcelain dishes, but that paint in there is AJ Ludlow pigment. And that's, oh, obviously you can't read it, it's back to front. Anyway, it's uh, AJ Ludlow, professional professional watercolours, and they're nearly all pigment. I do recommend these, but don't go wild, just get a few colours that you like. Okay, so we'll turn this round, and I now have to try and find um, a brush and the colours that I was using, not that brush. Oh, there it is. So I need to mix up something a bit like that now. Hmm. <laughs> I thought I had some. I'll maybe use this. So uh, this colour is broadly French ultramarine and permanent alizarin crimson, I think. Oh, that's pretty nice. Um, 
Of course, the colour does go paler when it dries, so I have to bear that in mind. I think that's probably okay. And this is where we get that amazing, not amazing, <laughs> two colours together that just look lovely, I think. I hope I'm not snuffling. And they have this sort of, where are you? I know this is a this is a sort of part open bud, but they're they're frilly. These are they're called parrot tulips. These amazing ones, and and they're they're uh, a scrap of white paper. The edges of the petals do this, and you can find your own way of. Um, by hinting at this amazing frilliness. And this is one way of doing it with a brush like this. But you can also get, um, I think, I'm trying to find another brush so that I can demonstrate this. An unusual brush for me because it isn't a flat-ended one. I think I've done it like this before. I'm just going to... Yeah, like that. That's another way of sort of playing around with how to achieve the frilliness. Just by like pressing it a bit. And now then, when I look at these tulips. They have um, they have a deep they start a deep blue. So that is like rather that's sort of what I'm doing here on this one. I need Palmer's watching, Una's watching, Donna's watching. I think I need paint by numbers. You do not need paint. I love how mucky you're... I beg your pardon. Mucky? Michelle Barwick, hi. This is, this is tidy. Blimey, she's got no idea how bad it gets. I tidy up for these sessions, I'll have you know. Right. So now I am painting like a, uh, a pe another petal that is emerging from within here, still using quite a big brush, so it's getting a bit, a bit tight for such a fat brush. Oh, you should see our like, front porch. It's absolutely bulging with um, vegetable plants ready to go out. We've got runner beans, lettuces, carrots. No, not carrots. Um, runner beans, lettuces. Well, we've got runner beans and lettuces. Um, tomatoes, tomatoes. And it's really exciting thinking about them all going in the garden. And we spent a bit of time yesterday, Fifey and I, um, my husband and I, making making uh, a support for the runner beans.
but I'm almost disheartened already because every year, almost, I get really, really excited. Peas, we've got peas as well. Every year I get really excited and um, plant everything. And basically it just becomes a casual snack for a rabbit or a, or a, a pigeon or some sort of underground dwelling creature. And we've barricaded, we, with the front garden, the vegetable garden is like, um, surrounded by a gate thing and also not a gate like railings all the way around and we've also done this amazing uh, we've dug wire into the ground to try to prevent rabbits from getting in because we've noticed even baby rabbits can get through the rails that are only that wide so yeah it's like I'm trying to get excited but I just feel that things are going to go badly wrong and that once again, something will come. It's sort of getting there. It's quite nice. Elizabeth is watching Liz Els. Emma, Kelly Finn. Emma's got, she's probably shoved a sausage in to keep him quiet. Kelly. Tracy. That's the blacksmith, incidentally. Margaret, it's not the same without him. Without the blacksmith. Love these, thank you. That's what we like to hear. <gasps> Look at the time. And we've done practically nothing. I'm just going to quickly do something. Just get some really strong blue paint and do that thing down here. When you look at them quite closely, it can be quite confusing and you can be not quite sure where to go. It's like there's some there's a really beautiful bit. You know, that 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 one bit there is just quite quite amazing. Let me just very very quickly do something. some green use my sap green that's the controversial one because I've been to uh, or heard people say oh mm, no sap green don't use that but I do So, um, yeah, colours and paint and stuff. Just go and have a look at the website. And you can always message me. I have been sent some really, really lovely art. And in the last 24 hours, really nice paintings. Um, people who are going to be just doing such lovely, lovely paintings after this that thing with a C that we don't want to mention after that's all finished. So I sort of started doing these green bits here. When that's dry, I can paint the purple bits on it. It'll be really, really nice. Whoops. Just put it on the fox by mistake. So. Foxy needs a darker eye. As I said, the paint um, gets lighter when it gets dry. I think we need a, a darker eye and a darker ear tip. So, yeah, that's today. Rupert Worrell, hello, are them dat? Mary Ann and Paul Knox are just trying to get a rise out of me and it won't work. It's not the same without him. Uh, when you say, Margaret Wood, it's not the same without him, are we talking about Rolf Harris? Or the blacksmith? Um, Karen McCarthy's watching, hi. Right, you've had plenty of me. 
uh, and once again my face has gone bright pink hope you have a lovely day I think I will and then I'll go for a swim later on and then a massive dog walk I'm afraid I'm up to two exercises a day so I'm hoping that's all right right have a lovely day bye